Hello, and welcome back. I'm Dr. Abstract, and this is a Zim Basics. We're going to do a Zim Basics on drawing, on drawing on the canvas. I'll show you how to draw in a basic way using a shape, a Zim shape. And that's very similar to raw drawing on the canvas. But I'd also like to show you Zim Pen, which makes all that easier for you. So let's go look at an example of a pen now, and then we'll pop into some code and do some basic drawing, and then we'll also make the pen work as well. So here under examples in the zimjs.com site, there's GenPen. This is probably the most complicated app we've made. There we are drawing. Uh, this drawing allows you to drag it. It also has a variety of different types. So there we can draw a city. Uh, we just drew a kite tail. There's a traditional, oh, that's still a city, sorry. It's a traditional line. So there we've drawn a line. There's also these layers and allows us to undo and delete. And so we can undo those things, undo. We could have put these on multiple layers. There's the different types of pens, but there's also changing uh, features of the pen, parameters of the pen in all sorts of, uh, you know, a variety of ways including, say, there's our purple line. Well, if we added a color here, okay, then watch the line. It becomes two colors. And if we go out here and draw, then we're drawing with those two colors. So we'll come back to some of that stuff. But like I said, this was the most complicated app, so a little bit difficult to look and see how a pen works. <laughs> Um, this is a, a more straightforward app right here, the Angel Maker, as we as we go into the holiday season. Maybe that's good, but um, last holiday season, I made angels for my family. Oh, isn't that cute? And my pets. And then this was the angel uh, drawer that we could do. So again, that's in pen. And you can pick these things up and move them about and make uh, make little angels. Ooh, yay! <laughs> okay, so that's drawing with a Zim pen, and then we've mirrored it in some way. Um, so another example there. We've recently done an NFT down here. Let's see, one of these NFTs, the Venusian Vase vendor, this one right. Oh, nope, sorry, the, la the Lepton Lamp Lord, of course. The Lepton Lamp Lord right here also uses a pen. And that's a pen being drawn, except we're not even drawing it. Isn't that neat? So it's just randomly going to go through and draw pens. Although there is a tool here that uh, allows you to do different things like set the colors and the, how it animates and stuff like that. So that's almost like a mini version of Gen Pen that's operating on its own to create these uh, lamps like that. Or are they lords? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so let's go into some code and try out then uh, manual drawing. There might be, under the collections here, there might be a Zim bits on manual drawing. We certainly have manually done manual, manual drawing before. Um, let's see. You know, I would say there's probably a half dozen, a dozen in there. Here's, oh, no, that was an example of it. No, it was something like that. It was some sort of neon, oh, yeah, dynamic drawing with neon colors. Wee! Okay, so that's, that's doing that stuff. Wow, 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 wow. All right, that's more along the, that was before uh, we did Gen Pen. So that's more along the lines of traditional drawing. And now, uh, yeah, let's pop into some code and check things out. So I'm in Zim. Oh, before we close that down, I should show you how to get the template. So back on, on the Zim site, you can go to code and hit copy. And that will copy the template. Hey, what's going on with my, oh, it's still loading. Okay, there. My color syntaxing has gone there. So I hit copy. And then we go back and we paste into here. We can call this Zim Dynamic Drawing. We're bringing in Zim NFT. And we won't have a circle. There we go. I'll open this up in Browser Plus, which is a plugin for Atom. You could open it up in a browser as well. There it is on the right hand side. 
So the general idea behind drawing is you would draw into a shape. So const shape is equal to a new shape. And we'll just add to. So the shape has the traditional coordinates as well, where you would draw to x and y. If we just add two, that means we're going to add the shape at the top left-hand corner. And whatever coordinates we use is just going to move from that location. So for instance, uh, well, let me back up a step. Uh, this is a zim shape, which extends a from a um, CreateJS shape which extends from a canvas shape. So on the canvas, that's almost all we're given. It's just the ability to draw on the canvas. Uh, there's some other effects and stuff. Oh, my cat is at the window. Uh, Roseanne, can you let the cat in, please? There, sorry about that. Ever since we began, <laughs> <laughs> the cat has been clawing at the back window here, but I've just asked someone else to uh, let the cat in. Hopefully that'll work. All right, so Kant shape is a new shape. Um, yeah, the canvas, uh, just raw canvas, also has some other effects like blend modes. We can put text on there. You can put images on there. But it's missing a lot of things, like it's missing containers to be able to group those things together and move them together. It's missing events and stuff, and that's what CreateJS came along and, and gave us. And then Zim came along and gave us lots of components, conveniences, and controls. But this shape is very much like a CreateJS shape. One thing with CreateJS shape, though, is you had to draw everything into a graphics property. So it was never directly in the shape. It would look like this. You would say something like um, shape.graphics. Uh, begin a fill. Let's see, what was that? I think it was begin fill or something like that. And you could probably say a color there, I think. Um, like if you were in HTML, you could say blue. All right, and that would that would start a fill. And this is very much like the canvas as well. That, that would start a fill, and then you would do a, uh, maybe a, you could draw a rectangle, shape dot graphics dot draw rectangle. Uh, oh, you may have had to move to a certain location. Well, let's just try it. Let's see what happens. Zero comma, zero comma. I haven't done a CreateJS sort of raw way in a while. Let's see if it works. No. So we've added the shape to the stage. We're using the, and by the way, the create all the CreateJS stuff still works in a Zim shape. Uh, I can't remember. Maybe begin fill was wrong. Anyway, I don't. I don't do it this way anymore. Um, it's a little bit lengthy. So let's comment those out. And maybe if we see some docs on it at some point, we can figure out what should have gone in there to make that work. Now, what we've done in Zim, as of I think Zim 10, maybe Zim Neo. Uh, nine that is, is we've shortened the shape so that you don't have to go into the graphics property, but you do have to use the little shortcut versions of these things. So shape dot uh, fill that would make a fill, and then draw a rect like that, and then you would say zero comma zero comma one hundred comma one hundred. Oh, and we want a fill of some color. Uh, we'll do a zim blue that time. And we refresh there, and now that seems to have worked. So uh, what we did, uh, uh, CreateJS has these shortcuts as well as the long cuts. <laughs> shortcuts, long cuts. Uh, and I always used, as soon as you learn the shortcuts, it becomes really easy, and that's what you tend to do. Um, so we remade these shortcuts directly on the shape so that we don't have to keep on using the graphics in there. I would always forget. And sometimes you would assign that to it. You would, you might see some old examples that are like this. You would go uh, const g. Well, at the time we were using var. But anyway, const g is equal to shape dot graphics like that. And that's just a shortcut. Then we could have said g dot whatever, blah, blah, blah. And instead of going shape dot graphics, shape dot graphics, we just kept on using the g. So that's how we used to shorten that a little bit. And 
then what we decided to do was just put them all directly on the shape itself as methods. Okay, so that was drawing a rectangle. But, um, and as a matter of fact, this is how we used to make rectangles. This was the only way to make a rectangle. There was no Zim, uh, you know, this, this rectangle, new rectangle, 100 comma, 100 comma red, dot center that rectangle. So that's, that's how we make a rectangle now. Save, refresh. Uh, what's going on? Oh. Okay, new rectangle, capital R. Um, so that's how we make a rectangle now is with the Zim rectangle class. Same with circle, triangle, etc. But you could make a circle. There's a draw circle, draw D, DC as well to draw a, a raw circle shape. And one handy thing with that is you can draw a whole bunch of things into one single shape and treat that either all together. There's certain advantages, like all that stuff could be a single mask. Uh, you can, uh, what other advantages might it have? Uh, well, it just acts as one unit in a sense. And you can combine it, that, that one unit, with um, other, other drawing techniques such as lines, like drawing lines and curves. I'm going to show you some of those right now. Okay, so... Uh, but when it came to making just basic shapes like that, it, it's easier to, to do that. And that's what we did. So CreateJS only has this stuff, whereas um, Zim has introduced the Zim shapes and also blobs and squiggles, which are handy, and a few others. Okay, let's comment that out, though. So that was us drawing a rectangle, but let's try something else. Let's say shape dot move to. So that means move to. We can move to a certain location. How about 300 comma 300? dot line to so here's a line to and then we can line to 400 400 now let's see what happens oh we may need yeah we we also need hmm, a dot uh, set stroke so this is setting a stroke there's a stroke and a set stroke and I always get them mixed up of course why why wouldn't you so the stroke is hmm, I believe the color so we'll go with purple oh we'll use this in purple purple and the set stroke is or stroke style that's what it is not set strokes that's why I get mixed up this is stroke <laughs> and this is stroke style which I think is treated as the thickness of it so why don't we go five I believe we do that before we move and there we go so um, there's a purple line that's going from 300 300 to 400 400 Okay, and if we make it really thick, I've never tried it really thick. There we go, nice and thick. And what would happen if we line to another location? If we get too many of these, we can sort of drop them down and stack them if you so desire. We're chaining these on. And dot line to another location. How about uh, 600? That's in, and we'll come back up to 100. Oh, my fill is still on. So that made a check mark for us, except we haven't turned the fill off. So the fill is still left on the shape. As a matter of fact, all of these things could be chained uh, directly from there, or indeed we could chain them right to here, uh, like so, and just chain the whole thing. Okay, and then we get the same thing. Same thing. Neat, huh? We'll come back a little bit later and see if we can figure it. When I go to the docs, which I'm going to soon, uh, we can figure out what those other commands that we might have been missing are. So there we are adding a shape. We're setting a fill of blue. But if we don't want the fill on this part, uh, well, if we didn't even want this stuff up here, we wouldn't have to do it. And there we just have our purple check mark. So that allows us to make kind of custom line twos. And you can also... Uh, make this follow the mouse. So that's drawing. We're, we're talking drawing. As your mouse moves, you can keep on drawing to your mouse location. You want to see what that would look like? So we'll leave this around. We'll leave the purple. I won't make it 50, though. Uh, comment out that. We can give it something, though. Stroke style of uh, 
five, four, five. And that gets us started. But now we can do it when we stage dot on stage mouse move. I think that's something I don't do that a lot. Arrow function. And in here, we'll constantly go to wherever the mouse location is. So we will. Hmm. We have to move to somewhere to start, though. That's a problem. So that's going to be on a mouse down, probably. Stage mouse down. At this point, right here in the stage mouse down, we'll uh, shape dot move to. Uh, here's how you can grab the x and y frame dot mouse x and frame dot mouse y. You can also capture an event object here and use e dot e dot stage x and e dot stage y or something like that. It's it's weird. So um, it was also it went back to raw create js, which was messed up a little bit when we moved to the um, retina zim retina which actually scales the uh, the pixel ratio of the stage and that messes up um, your raw create js mouse x and mouse y's we have since fixed all that stuff but in the process of fixing it all we also said hey we'll just keep track of a mouse x and a mouse y for you on the frame that you can get at any time sorry my desk is creaking Hopefully that's not too bothersome for you. Maybe it is now. So there we are moving to the location of the mouse at that time. And now every time we move the mouse, we're going to not move to, but line to that location. And let's see what happens. Well, it doesn't look very good. Stage mouse move. What happens? Stage mouse down and it just went. OK, nothing. Whoa, there's something. Uh, is there such a thing as a stage mouse move? OK, I haven't done this in a while. So let me try um, uh, by zogging here. That will tell us it will zog red. And we can kind of look to see if we can uh, stage mouse down, stage mouse move. And it just sort of stopped on me. Shape dot line two. It's kind of working, but then it Stage mouse move. Uh, yeah, we got lots. I'm on the stage, so every time I move the stage, we're getting we're, that that's coming through. So that's good, but it's just this part's not working. Shape dot line to frame dot mouse x frame dot mouse. Oh, do we need a stage to update? That's what it is. Stage to update. Uh, yeah, so the stage dot update. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice picture. Huh? Uh, when you resize the stage, you get a, a, a stage dot update, and so that's what we were missing. So there we go. Let's try again. Oh, why is it doing it right away though? Stage mouse down. Oh yeah. So this is still doing it on stage mouse move. Really, what we want to do, I suppose, is take this whole event and put it in here, like so. So. It looks like we didn't quite need it, but the problem is, is if if you other if you don't say where to start, such as when I mouse down, did you see what happened there? See, it's not drawing yet, and as soon as I mouse down, then it starts drawing. If we just had this thing right here, boop, and not that thing right there, then as soon as we pop our mouse in there, it just starts drawing, and then we have to kind of say, well, okay, I'll come in from the side. <laughs> So anyway, we want to really only start drawing, and we may only want to draw when we press down. That could have been uh, that could have been done as well. So only when we press. But here it is. As soon as you press, it'll start drawing, and probably when you stage mouse up, we'd want to stop all this. So it's not drawing, but unfortunately, it's it's still drawing. See that? And it may be that when what we want to do is mouse up, we want to stop that. So let's put that together. This is very raw. You also notice that it's pretty jaggedy. It's immediate and really not very smooth. <laughs> uh, okay, so stage 
mouse down. We're going to add a stage mouse move. We have to be a little bit careful here because uh, when we stage mouse up, we want to remove this stuff. So let's see. Probably can do that up here. Stage mouse up. Is it a mouse up or press up? And squiggly bracket semicolon. We want to stop this thing from happening. Well, this thing is created inside the stage mouse down. And so we'll need to let event, uh, mouse event, we'll call it. And then we'll store that here, mouse event is equal to that. And that allows us to turn it off and on. So every time we mouse down, it's going to make a new one, but that means that we've got to get rid of the old one. And that looks like this stage. So we copy that part, stage dot off, stage mouse move, and then we put this ID right here. So in create.js and in JavaScript, that's a way to remove the um, to remove the event. So that will no longer do the mouse move and it will stop drawing when we stage mouse up. As long as stage mouse up exists as an event. I think it does. Okay, down, up, and it's gone. Yeah, good. All right, so that's, that's your basic dynamic drawing kind of setup right there. The one thing that we're missing is damping. So we may as well do damping as a basics. I didn't really expect to. Uh, damping itself is, it's like a two or three line two or three line function, but it's sort of circular because it does. It, you don't go directly to where you want to go. You go partway to where you want to go. And it's really like a mind twisting thing. So we created zim damp to make that easier. Const damp x is equal to a new damp. So this is a class that has that function in it and we don't have to worry about it. And same with y. <laughs> so we have to damp both in the X and the Y. And there they are. Uh, the damp equations might start at zero. Anyway, we're going to see what happens when we just uh, make those. And then instead of going directly to the mouse X and the mouse Y, we say damp X dot convert we're converting that where where it says we want to go, but it doesn't really go there. It only goes a, a little ways there, and then it remembers how far it's going. It, it, I don't know. This does other stuff in it. The little equation is a couple line equation. Oops. All right, and that's damp y. So you see what we've done there? Don't go directly to the mouse x and mouse y. Instead, apply damping. I believe that will do it. You see what it, how it jumped? there to um, the wrong place. Um, the reason for that is, let's see, is it smoother though? Yeah, it's smoother. You see how it's not quite going all the way there? Oh, and there's a problem as well that um, because it doesn't go all the way there, as soon as I stop moving the mouse, I wanted that thing to move towards me. So we've got a stage mouse move really what we want in here is that just gets turned on all the time, not only when we're moving. So as soon as you apply damping, you no longer use the stage mouse move. Instead, you use a ticker, ticker.add, and we add this function right here. And this, instead of becoming mouse event, probably should be called uh, tick, uh, just lowercase ticker is fine. Yeah, ticker here. So ticker is equal to this function right here that we just added. And then to remove that, we would say ticker dot uh, remove. And inside of here is ticker like that. So a ticker is something that runs all the time, not just when we're moving the mouse, because the damping needs to work while our mouse is still and the damping will complete to the location here, and I'll show you that, what it looks like. Okay, you see how that moved to right there, 
how it moves to my, my cursor. Before it wasn't doing that. We're still having this problem at the beginning where it's kind of doing this strange jump. And so what the heck is it doing there? Uh, shape dot move to hmm, mouse X and mouse Y. I think we need a, a, what's called an immediate, certainly at the beginning one. So what's happening is the, equa the damp equations think that they're starting at zero, zero, but I put the cursor here. So you see what it's done? It's gone from roughly zero, zero, or it's trying to go from zero to zero, and then it's damping to where my cursor is. Um, so what we need to do is put in a, a value, and we don't we don't actually know the value here, but we know the value here when we mouse down. So that's what we need to do. We have to say damp x um, dot immediate. And this means don't try and go 10% of the way there or whatever the default damp is, which is 10%, I think. Um, don't try and go only a portion of the way there. Just go immediately to wherever I'm going to tell you here. And that would basically be the frame mouse x. And for the damp y, it would be, hey, please go immediately to the, uh, the y position. Frame mouse Y. And now it won't jump from 0, 0 because it'll start the damping at wherever we put the cursor. Yay. Okay, and same with there. So what was happening before is it was it was left over here, but I jumped over here, so the damping had to get from here was the last place to where we press new. But now it doesn't do that. Okay, so that's basic drawing, and uh, it's smoother. It's definitely smoother than it was before, but it's not necessarily as smooth as we can get it. So the first parameter of damping is the immediate value, but because we're only doing that when we mouse down, we're using the immediate method rather than putting in the immediate value here. We don't know when we make this. We don't know where they're going to mouse down, so we can't put an immediate value in there. Sometimes we can, but not at this point. So in both cases, we're going to say null and or undefined. Um, undefined is the ES6 way of doing it. With Zim, it doesn't matter. You can pass in a null because the back end of Zim is made in ES5, so it accepts a null. But anyway, uh, and now the next parameter is what, how much damping is there. So here's what it looks like if there's basically no damping, although it's the number one. So you see how jaggedy that is? It's immediate. It's jumping immediately to where we're going. But look at all the little bong, 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 bongs. Okay. So uh, we can reduce that by going to something like 0.1. I believe that's the default. And now we get a relatively smooth line, much smoother than before. Still some, some corners. The problem is the more smooth we get, 0.01, the slower it gets. So now it's lovely and smooth, but it's too slow. Uh, by the way, that little crook right there is because I went off of um, Adam. Adam doesn't register mouse around here. So you can see it's like stuck. Now it's back. Now it's going to, even though my mouse is way up here. The real browser doesn't do that. The real, and, and as a matter of fact, it didn't even register the mouse up either. So it started all of us a mess. So real browser, open in browser, that's that's no problem. It's still slow, but even if I'm off here, um, there, the, the mouse up showed. Actually, it, it is still doing, yeah, it's still doing that. But you can turn on, if you want, um, uh, the mouse moves outside the canvas. So that's pretty easy to do. And then what will happen is if my mouse is out here and I move it outside of the canvas, it will still follow my mouse. At the moment, it kind of doesn't. Okay, but you can turn that on with the parameter of the of the frame. So up here, it's one of the, the frame parameters, mouse move outside. Or I think you can just go frame dot mouse. Move outside equals true. I uh, can't remember for sure if you can do that. Let's see. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know if it'll work with that one anyway. Open in browser. Let's try it with this one. Nope, that wasn't it. So yeah, that didn't work. Okay, let's just do a quick... Uh, well, okay. 
sorry, this one's all messed up because um, if I mouse up outside here, just for Adam, it doesn't capture the mouse up outside. Um, these I would all have to put into parameters. Uh, let's see, that is the scaling colon fit, the width colon that, the height colon 720, the color and the outer color. And then finally, mouse. Uh, I can't remember it. Hopefully, it's all that word. True. Squigglies. And let's try it. Real browser. Open browser. Yeah, there we go. So now my mouse is way out here, and it's still following my mouse no matter where it is. Normally, it doesn't follow the mouse if it's outside the stage, but here it is. See? Which you may or may not want. It's up to you. Okay. So, we've talked about damping, which I didn't quite expect to have to do. So you can see that there's a fair bit that goes into the thoughts of a pen. That gives us a basic pen. That, that's too slow, though, so we don't want 0.1 there. You can try 0.5, maybe, and see how that feels. See, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. It's still it's still getting there, yeah, but it's, it's relatively smooth. Anyway, so you can see that a lot of thought goes into uh, a pen, or the dynamic drawing. Uh, what we did is we made Zim Pen. So let's have a look at the Zim Pen. Perhaps before we leave, though, the other thing is, is why this is not quite as smooth as a Zim Pen is we're using a line two. So what that does is it draws a straight line to where the mouse is. But you can actually approximate that better with a curved line. And you can use the sort of the beziers of the curve can be set by the angles between the previous point, the middle point, and the next point sort of thing. Uh, and that, that takes an average of the uh, sort of and curves it towards where you're going, and that will get you a smoother line. So that's yet another technique that has to go into all of this stuff, and you're starting to go, okay, I don't have to do that every single time. And plus, it's tricky to know how to do all that. Uh, and it's tricky to know how to do the damping, uh, but we've done the damping for you, and now there's the pen that sits up on top of this. But before we go and see the Zim pen, let's just finish off with the, the basic generic drawings, like you would do a curve to CT there, but then you've got to put in, pass in more parameters. Let's go out to the docs and take a look at that. Uh, open up a browser, because I just want to get to the docs anyway, and here's the docs. And if we look up shape, Okay, so it extends a create JS shape. Uh, here's some examples of shape things. One thing we haven't talked about is a generator. Uh, when we make the dynamic drawing with a shape, it's all absolute position. So we have an X and Y coordinate, zero, zero at the top left of the shape, and then it goes in pixels off to the right and down. Well, that's a pain in the neck if you need to, to draw two different angles and different, um, you know, if you want to say, hey, go 30 degrees, then go 27 degrees, then go 24 degrees, you'd have to start using sines and cosines to figure out absolutely where that would end up. Whereas in generator, this one right here is relative. You can say, hey, just draw, draw a length this 100 at 30 degrees, then draw a length of 50 at 24 degrees, then draw a length of... 33 at minus 57 degrees, and it would know how to do all that stuff. Um, so that's generator. That works like processing does. It has other treats as well. Remember that you can also do shapes with blobs and squiggles. So you don't have to draw them like this manually. You can draw them with blobs and squiggle points, or you can draw blobs and squiggles and then record the points of them, and then your drawing stuff. So, uh, or you can let people uh, use the Bezier points to change their shapes, etc. 
So here's in pen uh, and connectors is, is there as well. Those are shapes that are lines that sort of connect to, to other things. So here's an example with the newer code. Make a new shape, fill it red, draw a rectangle. We did that, add it to somewhere. And we can also draw lines and we did this too. Yay. So we did those two new examples right there. Here's an old example, shape.graphics.begin.fill.drawrect. So that all should have worked. I don't know what, oh, did I actually call it begin fill? I can't remember. <laughs> Maybe I said start fill or something like that. But anyway, that, that's, that's what I thought I had said, but um, it didn't work. Maybe I said draw rectangle instead of draw rect. I'm not sure. Here's the stroke done in the old way as well. Um, this is us storing the graphics property on the G, which you'll see in older examples, G dot begin stroke, or that would have been just G dot S and G dot MT is, or move to is MT. As a matter of fact, just down below here, here's all the short forms. Move to, line to, arc, arc to, bezier to, curve to, these are all very similar, but they have, they, they work in just slightly different ways erect, closed paths. Anyway, you can read about all these. This is traditional canvas drawing type thing. It's also all on CreateJS. So there's the, the docs for it. Just click quickly there. Uh, here's the graphics class. And here's all the tiny things. And if you want to read about what closed path does, you go to closed path and it says blah. Okay, there's not too much in these docs. It's sort of like curve, curves too. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, all right, but anyway, that's the CreateJS docs in general. Uh, the CreateJS docs have a bunch of weird stuff uh, up here as well, these fill commands and stuff. And this, this was another reason we, uh, we went to the Zim shapes is if you wanted to change the shape, or ch sorry, change the color, of something that you've done, you had to record the commands you did, and then you could redo the command after. And it was like, nobody's going to think that that's a natural way of doing it. They just want to go circle.color equals red. And so that's what we turned it in. In the background of the Zim shapes is all this weird um, recording commands and redoing the commands. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, there's, and I don't want to, that, it's, odd that they would put that I think what happened is they made it they got a lot of flack for not being able to change the colors after you just have to redraw the shape basically and so then they added that and they were really proud of it which I guess they would be and stuck it right here at the beginning of the shape to scare everybody <laughs> it was like oh no great you made this really powerful graphics class that can you know redo stuff but ah you know don't tell me here in the second paragraph it's like it scares me so anyway, uh, it's a little bit about that. Okay, why don't we see the Zim pen now? Sound okay? Although this has been 40 minutes, you poor things. How about we won't go too much into the Zim pen? It doesn't, hopefully it doesn't really take that much, but uh, let's go pen and we can try out some of those examples that are there. Here's the pen. Uh, what does this example bring us to? So we can animate the pen too. So what we're doing is animating the pen along a path. And this one is sort of just a play. Hey, let's do a barbed wire. So it's similar to um, Gen Pen where we're picking different types, but it doesn't have all the customization features. It has, oh, it has some size and spread. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, whatever that is doing. Okay, so there's size and spreads there as well. Um, Probably that's a little bit easier to look at the code for that, but there's also examples here. So if you want to do a basic pen, it would look like all this. Should I type it? Uh, let's, let's copy it and we'll put it in place and we'll talk about it. Commenting all that stuff out. A new pen. And we're choosing a pen type of kite tail, although it'd be interesting to just see what happens here. Uh, we've said make a nib, which is a circle, 
and we're centering it and we're dragging it. And what that does is it gives us a little nib there. And so now I can pick that up and, and drag it around. However, you see that it doesn't go like you have to kind of slow down before it gets there. But if you pick up, I, I just let go ahead of time, it, um, it won't draw necessarily to where you're going. But that's fine. It draws until you mouse up, basically. So that's kind of it almost in its simplest uh, form. If you don't provide a nib like that, then you can't see anything to drag. So you would definitely need a nib, although you don't need the kite tail. I don't know what the default is. I think it's probably just line. So now we're drawing a line, okay, with, with a nib. That's not usually how we do it. Usually how we do it is we pass this pen into a motion controller. They're made for one another. So we say new motion controller like that, and we pass it the pen. Well, we have to name it the pen, or we could pick that whole thing up and put it in there, but we would name it here. Const pen is equal to that new pen. We don't need a nib now. We can still specify things about the pen if we want, and we don't need to drag it anymore. But the thing is, uh, this isn't quite what you think is going to happen, because here you've got to just press down, and, and then the pen will go to wherever you press. So it's not really, it's not following, it's, it just goes to wherever you press down. Because that is the default motion controller. So what we really want is a press move, I think, like that. And so as we press and move, then make the pen follow. Let's have a look. So there it is, but it's going fairly slowly. Wow, wow. It is awfully smooth, though. Isn't that nice and smooth? The reason it's going slowly is the motion controller has default damping and the pen has default damping. So we're damping this thing twice. Also, the pen has, uh, or sorry, the motion controller has a speed. So, probably get to those things pretty easy, but uh, target is a pen, and the type is press move. Let's see if this still works. Yeah. So, those must be right. And now we can do some other things, such as speed. I don't know if this will help. We could go 100, comma. And let's see, so now the motion controllers, yeah, woo, okay, so there's 100 speed, still smooth, um, but it's still got damping too. If I were trying to write my name, it's not getting, it's not getting, oh, that was dragging it, by the way, it's not finishing fast enough for me. It, it moves fairly fast, but um, anyway, didn't finish fast enough. So we just reduce the damping. Damp, colon zero on that one, and just use the damping in the pen. That might work. Uh, damp, colon, oh, that's not going to move at all. Damp one, sorry. Um, okay, so now it's faster, but you see how it's a little bit bumpier. But let's see, can I do my name? I can do my name better. Okay, generally all right. So it's up to you how you want to adjust that. And if you take away the damping here, damp zero, zero, then we're back to one. <laughs> yeah, it, then we're back to going as fast as we can, which doesn't really work out very well with the pen because we're, go we're going too fast, too far, and leaving these little uh, gaps. So if you want to do that, go back to your just plain old make draw a line that follows it but um, we like the damping let's try 0.5 and see if um, that works out well yeah so that's all right it doesn't gap uh, if you don't want to be able to pick that up of course you can set that uh, in here probably something like drag colon false maybe it's either draggable colon false move colon false something colon false I don't know and I, it'd be nice if this were a little bit thicker, so that's not it. How about move, colon, false. Yeah, so now I can't pick that up. And thickness would be in here. Uh, thickness, is it thickness or width? Thickness, size, it might be size. Size uh, 10, comma. 
I can see little gaps in there. I can't, still can't pick that up. I like picking it up if I want to. Yeah, I see little gaps on the corners. Not the end of the world. That's because um, I don't think I'm damp, I'm not damping smoothly enough. Uh, this would be point, I don't know, point two, maybe, point one. Mm, still see them. But that's handy, because check this out. Just watch this. It's really cool, this stuff. And uh, I don't think enough people are using pen to its full p p potential, <laughs> potential color. Red. So this is how you would change the color. But if we want to, we can randomize the color by passing in an array here. Red. Well, <laughs> okay, here comes the holiday season. Red, green. That's randomizing it, though. So you see how sometimes it's red, sometimes it's green? Well, what if you did a series of red and green? So now it will go alternate red and green. And you can let people draw candy cane things. Nice, huh? Um, remember that you can also programmatically do it. So based on something else, you can change colors. Like you could make a program that change, cycles through RGBA or whatever hue saturation values. Usually what you do there is cycle through the saturation. And so every time you run a function, it changes saturation slightly. And, and you just call the function right here. And the result of the function would go in there. You can also animate the width of of the, um, let's try, is that size? Oh, I did size, yeah. Yeah, so size, you can animate it, but you can also um, series it. So this is how we usually do it, 10, 20, 30. That would be sort of a very pedantic way of a series of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, you know, and have the size slowly grow bigger. It would be better to just animate the size of the pen. It's very easy to do as well. But this will do a series where it's starting to look like kite tail, isn't it? What if we didn't? And that one, you know, was more exciting. How about 50 and 100? So do you see what I mean now why I think pen is being underused? Right? This is just like, wow, it's very magical. So find out a little bit more about it. And these are the ZIMV values, which makes pen very powerful. And uh, let me just leave with uh, some pictures of what we've made with, say, Gen Pen, which would be along the same lines. So I'm going to go under examples here. Pop on down. Oh, no, not under examples. I'm going to go to our banners and have a look at the Gen Art, where we put a lot of examples in from uh, this is generator, so that's pen. That's the same kind of idea where we're drawing circles, but we're generators doing it, and it can make. I mean, show, show you quickly. So there's drawing a whole bunch of rectangles, but rotating it each time. And if you look at the code for that, it's like one line of code, and it's very straightforward as to what's going on here. Nice, huh? That stops and starts, stops and starts. Whoosh. So that's dynamic drawing, but with um, a way to sort of do more generative art looking type thing. And that we turned into a blob and then filled the blob. Whereas on this side, uh, you can also draw immediately. So any of those draw immediately. We left this as the blob example, but we then on this side drew a fractal tree. So, and that drew immediately. As generator here, this was done with Gen Pen, much like the Lepton Lamp Lords. This is what gave us the ideas as soon as we started doing this. Oh my goodness, they look like lamps. We also use that random technique to draw some spaceships and with clouds, and all the stars are made with Gen. So that's a pen. Like we drew the stars with a pen and these sparkle bits, some robots that hangs on the inside of the pagoda scope in VR. People like looking at that picture. There's dynamic drawing with noise, so that's a little bit different. This is dynamic drawing, where we're drawing a line until we hit another line, and drawing a line until we hit another line, and adding fills. 
uh, Jared showed me how to do that. Well, uh, <laughs> I learned from Jared's work. <laughs> Here's dynamic drawing again with, I think this is with an emitter. So the emitter can draw as well into, uh, we should take a look at that in a brief look. So under Zim, under examples, under collections, there's the emitter collection, which is right here. And here's some examples of drawing lines, but using the emitters to draw the lines, basically. Cool, huh? Uh, so is the fireworks. That is, yeah, that's drawing the lines, but there's also fireworks that aren't, yeah, those aren't, they're just drawing shapes along in the emitter, but that one is drawing lines. Okay, it's probably been long enough. That's uh, great. So that's an introduction to dynamic drawing. There is under the mm, collections, under the collections, under Zim bits. There's also a basics on drawing particles in here. Or not drawing particles, drawing lines. And what does that look like? Might be this, or was that animating lines? Could have been this one. So that's, yeah, that's dynamic drawing where we're, uh, we'd probably do that, could possibly do that with a blob and a squiggle these days. But anyway, that, that was one drawing one there. And, oh, I remember the other one was a Zim one, this one right here. So this was before we made Zim Pin, Zim Pin, Zim Pen. We, uh, we did this, and that's when we first sort of started falling in love with, oh, my goodness, look at, we can turn a line into these little, little, little things. So that's what we did. We turned a line into those little things. Well, that was before Zim Pen. So you can see uh, a basic version of, of doing that if you want to. All right, I am Dr. Abstract. I didn't mean to keep you for almost an hour, but uh, that's a Zim Basics on drawing. However, you also got to see some damping and how to work with some shapes and stuff. Um, at some point, do you see, um, let's see. Let me show you if I can. Um, open C, how do I do it? Well, okay, tell you what, I'll go to my docs. And open up a doc desktop reveal what do I want to find I want to find one that is called NFT so here's my NFT directory and then op art and we'll bring this on over here for you so all this op art oh sorry this was done uh, well that's uh, uh, orbit zoom which is built in air uh, which is flash basically but all this op art that you're looking at here was drawn with lines uh, and shapes and stuff like that. So all this is dynamic drawing. This was back in Flash, but it's basically exactly the same thing where we had exactly the same commands that we had in Flash. We've got them in the shape. So that's all that line to, move to, Bezier to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, all of these are dynamic drawings. Now they're overlaid on a picture and blend modes are applied, and you can do that as well. So all this stuff could have been done in Zim, but it's done with this program called Opartica that I made, and um, it allowed you, it had a bunch of sliders and dials that would allow you to play with things to, to make these various shapes. So I'm now launching those as a series of NFTs on OpenSea. That's what you're looking at here is uh, what will become that series. Nice, huh? All right. Catch you later. I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night. Hopefully you enjoyed the Zim Basics and look for more. We'll continue on maybe with some parallax or some other, other um, controls, Zim controls. Cheers.